bitch. Yeah. So what would your take be like if if you were looking at a team like the Giants and you saw that their needs, you know, really tough to get free agent hitters to come there. I'm wondering if this approach, this is this would be my approach. Now, I I'm maybe just full of it and be way off. But Giants still have money. They 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 say they want to cut payroll a little bit, but they just want to stay under the the tax limit. So they've got to go up to, they've got about 67 million right now that they're under. And they could cut some more if they don't tender Yaz, who's like 10 million, and Flores, they move off of him and Tom Murphy. They can move off another 15, 17 million easy and have about 85 million under the tax. I, if I was building this team, I would go out and try and sign top pitching like Burns and re sign Snell. And maybe that cost me 60, 65 million a year between the two in the 30 range. And I'm still under. And then maybe I go get one more pitcher like a Nathan Avaldi who's for a year or two. And I've got three solid pitchers. Then I would take a guy like Logan Webb who's signed to a very team friendly contract with four years. And I would move him for some really good everyday players that are young and controllable. And I would start to build my team up that way. And I would get rid of Webb's salary. That, that's about $24 million. So that lowers that threshold back down. I'm way under the cap. I've got young players to build around. And I've got pitching. Is that something that, I mean, it, f- it feels like something like, Brian might have done uh, just to because you can't get the hitters to come. They just don't sign in San Francisco. Pitching doesn't seem to be a problem, though. Well, I, th- I think um, you, know, you lay out an interesting perspective, but, you know, to get everybody to say yes, that needs to say yes. You're, you're talking about a lot of people to say yes the agent for all those players, the family of all those players, all those players, and then a team that, you you know, you're going to, after you do all this, you're going to trade, you know, your, your best starter right now for prospects. Who's got that many prospects? Who's got that many players on the verge of being really good big league hitters? You know, maybe I don't. I don't know who that would be. It might be Baltimore one. Baltimore has Baltimore has quite a few young guys. Okay. There. You know, are they ready to play in the big leagues? You yeah, know? a couple of these guys. A couple of these guys just got called up in the last year, and they're ready. Guys well, like Kobe Mayo, who's a big power hitter. Colton Cowser, another power hitter. Again, like you said, it's got it. You got to get the other teams to agree to it, and it's got to. But what if Burns says no? Or what if? Yeah, Snell then I guess. No? I think then you what you know you, says no. Yeah, then you got to keep. You probably end up keeping Webb because I like Webb. He's a very, you know, he's an excellent pitcher. He's a leader. He eats up innings. But the, I'm looking at the Giants' values. They don't have anybody of value that can bring people back. They don't. Their their best minor league player is Bryce Eldridge, who's got pretty good value but it's not anywhere near some of the other guys in the top 100. So baseball doesn't recognize him as highly as the Giants and the Giants fans do. So the Giants are ranked 30th in minor leagues, farm system, and Bleacher Report. 27. How many teams are there? 30. (laughs) Okay. So – you don't have a lot to trade from and a lot, uh, not a lot is coming. So, I mean, you look over my shoulder there, you see the positions of the hats. Those are the way the standings ended this past season in the far right corner, the Dodgers, Padres, D-backs, Giants, Rockies. I think that's going to be what it's going to look like for a few years. And I don't see much change. Yeah. Rockies farm system is like seventh. So they're moving up. Yeah. So the Giants could fall down. You know, people say, well, can't get any worse. Well, it it can. If you don't have the players in your system, 
and you can't sign the the stars, I think you got to move off of some of your better players to to just rebuild it. Might be the only way. You know, I mean, that coupled with really developing well and drafting well and international signing well, you know, and it's um, it's a long road to be great. It's a long road to be consistently competitive. Yeah. And, you know, it takes it takes a feeder system or and it takes a a city that's a major destination an organization. That's a major destination right now. I don't know if there's a franchise in North America that is a better, bigger, stronger destination than Chavez Ravine and the Dodgers. I don't know if there's a bigger, a bigger one, better one out there. I think if you're a player in Major League Baseball and you have a chance to choose, choose with rare exception, you're going to say to the agent, make sure you're dialing up Andrew Friedman. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a machine right now. And uh, if you're a Dodger fan, you're loving it because, you know, they're willing to, it, it reminds me of the 49ers yeah. when Eddie D Bartolo was running the show and yep. the NFL did not have a cap. He just, Oh, you want I, I, Dion? Okay. I'll go get Dion. Uh, you know, what other stars yeah, are out there? I'll go get these stars. And cause Eddie wanted to win. He wasn't concerned about spending his money on stars and having the highest payroll he treated his players wonderfully players loved him and he won a lot of super bowls and the standard was set i think the dodgers have the same mindset you got a group of owners that are not so much worried about the bottom line baseball wise they're looking i mean it helps to have that nice tv contract but the fact that they have that tv contract and they've got stars and they've got, you know, Jap- all of Japan, you know, pretty much just, you know, the Dodgers are be- have become an international brand. And, right. you know, we see what winning does. There's a lot of Fairweather fans that love to jump on the bandwagon and, you know, oh, I'm going to wear a Dodger hat. I'm going to get a Dodger jersey. I, you know, I'll get them for my kids. They're not even, they don't even grow up Dodger fans, but. Hey, they're the talk of baseball. Uh, I like Mookie Betts. I like Freddie Freeman. I love Shohei Otani. I want a jersey. You know, who doesn't want a Shohei Otani jersey that's a nine, 10 year old kid that loves baseball? It's just so you just, and, and that revenue, some of that revenue finds its way to LA. So it's to me, take advantage of it, keep it going. That's, that's what I would do if I had the, if I was in charge of the Dodgers and had that kind of money and I was winning, because as you know, Ned, anything can happen in baseball. Sometimes the best team doesn't win. The teams get hot. Injuries yep. happen. Yep. I mean, they almost lost to the Padres. So the yes. fact that they almost lost to the Padres, I think was like, we got to, we got to, we can't just sit on this. We got to make ourselves better. And yep. we can't let the Padres get better. Yeah. Well, so, they, they know how to make money. They know how to win. They know how to put together great teams. Absolutely. 